Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And
turning either to the right or to the left. Then you'll be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continuously. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you everywhere you go. Here ends the reading.
Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, we are rebellious people who want to live life on our own terms. So often our stubbornness prevents us from surrendering to your will and purposes for our life. Remaining faithful to you is so difficult. We thank you that we do not battle the ways of the world and our sinful nature on our own. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's Hill, to demonstrate and pour forth your profound love for us, a love which does not leave us lost in our sin, a love that offers grace and forgiveness. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Here is the reading. Wednesday evenings in Lent, we are looking at the things we think. As long as we live in mortal bodies, our minds are the place where our battle with Satan is won or lost. Our mind, that's the battlefield. Those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful, sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, they think about things that please the Spirit. That's Romans 8, verse 5. Tonight, we will focus on the subtle sin of discouragement and how it gets in the way of our God-centered thinking, our thoughts of God. The word discouragement comes from the root word courage. The prefix dis means the opposite of. 
So discouragement is the opposite of courage. When we are discouraged, we have lost the motivation to press forward. The mountain is too steep. The valley is too dark. The battle is too fierce. And we lose courage to move on. At our low points, Satan tempts us with thoughts of doubt about God's truth and promises. Jesus, he doesn't want us to be discouraged. In fact, he commands us not to be. Listen to what Jesus says to his disciples just before what was probably the most discouraging experience of their lives, his brutal death. Jesus says, don't you let your heart be troubled. Trust God and trust me. John 14, 1. Note Jesus' word, do not. They're, they are not merely comforting words. They are commands. Jesus knew they would be tempted to fear. What were they to do instead of being feared? Believe in God. Believe also in me. In other words, don't let your hearts and thoughts and actions be ruled by what you see. Let them be ruled by what I have promised. Discouragement is a temptation common to all. Paul tells the church at Corinth, the temptations in your life are not different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you the way out so that you can endure. 1 Corinthians 10. Dealing with dis discouragement, we sometimes need tenderness. And other times, we need to be tough. But either way, discouragement is not to be tolerated or wallowed in, it is to be fought. Satan offers wrong thinking to everyone, but we don't have to accept his offer. Marinating our discouraging thoughts leads to doubt and unbelief. We lose sight of God's truths and promises. We lose sight of God's goodness, kindness, generosity. When we let discouraging thoughts linger in our minds, we become selfish. Woe is me. Oh, what the, all the pity parties that I've had. Especially in these dark days of winter, stuck in the house. First because of COVID, and then because of the snow and the ice, and the ice, and the snow, and the frigid temperatures. Can't even take a walk. Walk with me. We put on blinders. All we see is our circumstances and nothing else. We get locked in our own little world, our world of hopelessness and melancholy and we end up with the poor me attitude. Discouragement can cause us to get careless with our tongue. It's easier to lash out at someone, complain, and use inappropriate words when our thoughts are consumed with our problems. Discouragement leads to anger. We've seen children trying to build something while their blocks keep falling over, leading them to become discouraged, even angry. And this leads to giving up. Discouragement sucks the life out of us. Instead of working hard, we only want to lay around. Why bother anymore? I give up. 
We can't afford to let discouragement take over our lives. We need to fight back. And what is tempting you to be discouraged? The COVID virus, its uncertainties, its effect on your way of life? Your schedules are all upside down? You don't know whether you should be here or there? A loss. The loss of a loved one. The loss of a job. The loss of good health. Loneliness. That cabin fever feeling. The economy. The black cloud that follows you all around. The authors of Psalm 42, our second reading this evening, they were having thoughts of discouragement. This psalm was written by the sons of Korah. They were of the nation of Israel, and King David had put them in charge of the music for worship in Jerusalem. They were the Old Testament music ministries, just like Ken. At the time of the writing of Psalm 42, the nation of Israel was in exile in Babylon, far from Jerusalem. There was no worship. The sons of Korah were downtrodden, downcast, and discouraged. They missed praising God in worship. They felt se separated from God. Psalm 42, verse 1. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is your God? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the worshipers, leading the procession of the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sounds of celebration. As I read these words of Psalm 42, it reminded me of our congregation here at Holy Cross and all congregations on Long Island. We weren't in exile, but the COVID pandemic had shut our doors. No worship, no praising, no meeting together. We were sad, we were downcast. Esther Raji was sad, she was discouraged. But instead of giving up, Letting those thoughts marinate in our minds, we, and the psalmists, made a deliberate decision. A deliberate decision to replace our downcast spirit with thoughts of God. Verse 5. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember God, his promises, his word. When those discouraging thoughts are marinating in your mind, you can make a decision to treat those downcast thoughts with thoughts of God. Listen to what Paul told the church in Corinth when they were discouraged. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4. Marinate your mind with God-focused thoughts. Listen 
to praise music, read inspirational books, read scripture, memorize scripture. The promise of Isaiah 43 is yours to cherish. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you, says the Lord. I've called you by name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there for you. When you're in rough water, you will not go down. I am God of Israel, your Savior. So don't be afraid. I'm with you. So don't be discouraged. I am with you. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good, not evil. Plans for a future and a hope. That Bible verse has gotten me through a lot of low times. So if I keep that in my mind and in my heart, I can keep going. And Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and discouraged. Hebrews 13, I will never leave you or abandon you. And remember Jesus' words to us in John 16. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations and difficulties, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for you to give us clear and holy thinking. Do not allow the enemy to cloud our minds. Empower us, Lord, to refuse to let Satan operate in our minds and distract us from you. Cast out all negative thinking, for it is not from you. Do not let us harbor fear, doubt, worry, discouragement, sadness, despair, envy, jealousy, and anything that breaks your heart. Help us to keep focused on you, making you the center of our lives. Help us to remember to examine our thinking often so we are able to set aside any thoughts that do not bring honor to you. Aid us in becoming better people daily because of your patient walk with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. And now, may our loving and gracious God Walk with us during the t this time of spiritual reflection and growth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
because her sister was moved to hospice. And she's standing here singing because she has the courage to sing before the Lord and to sing and rely on his strength to get us through, to get her through. Yours, I had to be preaching on discouragement because she lost her husband during COVID. And what a struggle that has been. So I gave her discouragement because she had the courage to keep on keeping on. She had to be in touch with them because the the um, share faith videos were shutting down the computer. I don't know if you were yeah, here you that one week. So yeah. So good night. Thanks for being here, Rachel. <laughs> no, it's okay. 
Okay. Oh, so she. There was a link, and I clicked on the link, and I followed it exactly, and it worked. Yeah. So okay. she she figured it out, but awesome. but she has to do that for every every background. Every share oh, face geez. motion background. background. Yeah. 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 So because she's using share faith, and it's great yeah, to like see. You know, I was trying to get fancy with. They have all the countdown times. I don't know if you've seen. Yes. It. Yes, I have. So. I'm trying, I'm doing this, I'm going crazy. So finally I, I called them and I'm like, why cannot, I, I'm following all the instructions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He goes, it should be working, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, what are you live streaming from? And I said, my phone. And he goes, oh, you can't use a smart device if you want to use the countdown timers. Oh. And I said, well, you think you can put that on your website? So, yeah. you know, people know. like me don't, you know, keep trying. Mm -hmm. So I he know. said that you needed a computer to be able to do that. So if we ever wanted to. Well, we have countdowns here. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can always download the countdown. You want me to start doing that? But then she can't run the announcements. Yeah, so. right. No, no. And then and then we're still up there talking, and it's going to pick it up, right? If she's running countdowns. Oh, she would turn the volume off. You mean for the live stream? Like if we have a yeah, live stream? Yeah. No, I think it'll be because then people are talking. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We're doing the last bit of setup. And yeah. Yeah, so they wouldn't do that online. But he'd have, I'd have to like, what? Take a picture of the book. And then if you read, turn the page, they would just see the book. They wouldn't see me. Okay. Right? Right. If you wanted the book to be really clear, yeah. then you can scan in the book and then you just do that. Or I told her what I could also do if you want to do a pre-recorded, I can do them into like little movies. It's oh. like little mini. Oh. You know how I edit. Yeah, because I want them to have a few stories. Mm -hmm. And Doris, you can listen in. We're doing a few Doris stories. Oh. Yeah. You and Doris, and, and so, and to set up, you know, a little story time. And that's what we're going to try and do. We'll try and start capturing the, yeah. the family's back a little. And, um, so is that what you had in mind? So then after the book is read, you can go back to, to the viewing 